happy dark matter day, of course. Thank you. Um, we'd like to know more about dark matter, but first of all, you should explain what this stuff is. Yeah, we really don't know. Uh, we, we see whatever observation we perform in the universe, you know, on the scale of galaxies or clusters of galaxies, or even on the larger scales in the universe, we see that there's this, uh, we have evidence of this mysterious form of matter. And, uh, you know, to me, it's, uh, you know, the most intriguing aspect of it is that not only it kind of uh, appears to act as a sort of a scaffolding for everything that exists in the universe, but if you want to understand how we, uh, our origins, you know, how we came into, into being, uh, we have to postulate the existence of this form of matter. You know, before stars formed, before planets formed, there was this kind of mysterious form of matter that was pulling gas together, you know, accreting gas, and, uh, and it's from this, uh, you know, big potential wells where gas um, uh, formed, where big clouds of gas formed, that stars started, the stars were born, the first stars were born, and then galaxies and so on. So understanding the nature of this dark matter does not only allow us to understand the structure of the universe, but also our own origins. It's about us. It's about us, fundamentally. There's a lot of research going on in, in, into dark matter. Could you give us a, a taste of what's going on in the field? Right, so, well, I can tell you that in the early 80s, basically, it became quite clear that this dark matter cannot be uh, ordinary matter. You know, it must be fundamentally different from anything we know. So everything we, we, we see around us and also with our most you know, powerful telescopes is made of atoms, of the same building blocks, essentially. Um, in the early 80s, it became quite clear that uh, dark matter cannot be made of atoms, it cannot be made of neutrinos, it cannot be made of any of the elementary particles we are familiar with. So uh, this requires uh, new physics, as we say. So new elementary particles are a possible explanation of this. Uh, of, uh, of the dark matter. They, they noticed that uh, some extensions of the standard model of particle physics that they were studying for completely different reasons. You know, when they were studying particle physics, um, uh, they were trying to, to understand the fundamental problems of the standard model of particle physics. They realized that you know, out of their theories that they were um, uh, starting to explain those problems, they could get for free, essentially, uh, dark matter particles. And this was very exciting. This connection was considered to be very exciting in the, in the early 80s. And the, so an, an enormous effort uh, has gone into the search for these new particles. And for uh, now, you know, almost four decades, uh, we've searched uh, for these uh, new particles in a number of ways. Uh, so there are people, for instance, searching for it in underground laboratories with experiments like Xenon 1 ton. Uh, there are people looking uh, for dark matter indirectly by looking at, you know, the astronomical astrophysical signals that they would produce, you know, uh, very high energetic light and this kind of things. And we use um, uh, satellites around the Earth, so gamma ray satellites, antimatter, to search for, for these particles. And the third strategy that we use to search specifically for this, uh, for this particle that could address some of the fund fundamental problems of, uh, of particle physics are accelerators. Uh, and in particular at CERN, where there's the, the Large Hadron Collider, and there's an enormous effort to, to search for new particles, for dark matter particles, at the Large Hadron Collider. So far, we haven't found anything. We haven't found the particles we were looking for. Uh, and, you know, there's a lot of, uh, 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 you know, soul searching <laughs> in the community to try and, uh, and understand whether we should keep going, keep searching for these particles, or whether we, su we should, you know, focus on alternative models. Um, uh, there are plenty of alternatives. In fact, you know, the problem of dark matter is not that we don't have a, an idea about what, what it could be, it's that we have too many ideas mm -hmm. and, and uh, we don't have enough data to tell, which sol to tell us which solution is the, is the correct one. So as we search for these new particles, we are also searching at the same time for other particles, you know, the so-called axions that are connected with other aspects of, uh, of particle physics, sterile neutrinos, you know, other mysterious, uh, you know, what, there are, um, again, extensions of the standard model of, uh, of particle physics. They are connected to these Gauss particles, the neutrinos, as we call them. Neutrinos are well, are, are well understood. We're not, we're not sure that whether these uh, sterile neutrinos exist in the universe. But if they do, they might act as, uh, as dark matter. So we, what we are seeing now uh, in, uh, in uh, 
this particular era uh, of uh, uh, photo particle physics and cosmology is that we are diversifying uh, the, the search uh, for dark matter. We're not just looking for uh, the, these particles that might address some of the fundamental problems of, uh, of particle physics. We're searching for many, uh, we, we are, we're trying to, to test many different ideas. And another a candidate that has been uh, very popular in the last uh, few years has been the so-called primordial black holes. Uh, so this, with, with these gravitational waves, we discovered very big black holes merging with each other. And the question, uh, uh, so th th this discovery prompted uh, the suggestion that dark matter might be in the form of, uh, of very big black holes. Uh, they cannot be black holes formed uh, uh, you know, from the collapse of stars, uh, because you know, stars are made of atoms, essentially, and, and we know that dark matter cannot have anything to do uh, with, uh, with baryons, with, with standard matter, let's say. But it could be primordial black holes, and this is an idea that uh, you know it was proposed already in the early seventies by people like Stephen Hawking, mm -hmm. uh, for instance. Searching, uh, we're also trying to figure out whether we can explain dark matter in terms of modified gravity. So instead of you know postulating the existence of a new form of matter, we try to uh, play with Einstein's equations, so, you know that, that explain uh, you know gravity on the on the on, on all scales in mm -hmm. uh, in the universe, and we try to see whether. By suitably modifying those equations, we can get something that resembles general relativity plus dark matter, uh, as uh, as in the, the the standard cosmological model. Mm -hmm. um, all these searches have one thing in common: yeah. nothing has been found yet. That's right. Isn't that a problem? Uh, well, it, it's uh, it's uh, it's how science works. Uh, it's uh, you know, and, and that's why it's called research, right? You know, we research. Uh, possible explanations for the phenomena we observe. What is important is that uh, you know we we follow the so-called scientific method, right? You know, so we have a problem, a scientific problem, we try to come up with explanations, and then we test with experiments those explanations. Doing science doesn't mean being always right, right? You know, you know not even Einstein was always uh, was always right. In fact, you know, a number of things I mentioned earlier, you know, black holes, gravitational waves, uh, you know, the expansion of the universe. Uh, you know, they are all ideas and concepts that Einstein uh, didn't like at all, mm -hmm. as a matter of fact. And, you know, he thought they were just, you know, plain wrong. Uh, so if Einstein uh, was wrong, you know, we can also, we can all uh, uh, be wrong. That's part of science. And, um, and that's how we make progress. If an idea doesn't work, uh, you know, we, 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 well, first of all, we, we try to, we, to, to verify it with our experiments. And if it doesn't work, we move on and we try the alternative uh, ideas. So there's no guarantee that you know any of these uh, ideas will turn out to be to be right. But that's uh, that's how science works. So, you know, it's a scientific adventure, and there's no guaranteed result. The other interesting aspect is that along the way, we always learn a lot, and uh, and science is full of examples of uh, you know discoveries that were made when scientists were trying to you know address a completely different question. So, you know, uh, even if, uh, you know, these particles that we are searching for turn out not to exist, we are learning so much about particle physics and astrophysics as we, as we search for them that, you know, the, all this time is not, is not wasted. You're not desperate yet. No, no, no. I, I, I think it's, you know, uh, I, again, that's how science works. Right. Uh, that's, uh, that's what we are witnessing uh, in our field. And I'm actually very excited about uh, the potential for, for new observations, mm -hmm. uh, and in particular observations that will come from uh, new astronomical surveys that will tell us a lot about how dark matter behaves uh, in the universe. So we can address fundamental questions like, uh, you know, does dark matter interact with itself, uh, or, you know, are there substructures of dark matter, as uh -huh. people think, uh, in, uh, in standard cosmology? One of the predictions of the standard cosmological model is that small clumps of dark matter should exist uh, in every galaxy, essentially, mm -hmm. including our own. And uh, you know, we, are, we are trying to figure out uh, how to search for these, uh, for these substructures. And this would prove that you know, the matter exists and that the, this prediction of the standard model is, is correct. There are many astronomical surveys that will help us address uh, this particular question. Um, and the other uh, thing I'm very excited about is the uh, gravitational wave interferometers. Mm -hmm. So we've discovered, two years ago, we've discovered gravitational directly measure these gravitational waves for the first time. Uh, this really opens a new window on the universe 
and uh, we are you know uh, very excited uh, by by the potential that these new observations have you know we believe that we can search in the so-called waveform of gravitational waves we can search for the particular signature uh, that that these dark matter particles can imprint uh, on uh, on that mm -hmm. and um, and we are trying to figure out in particular whether by you know, first of all, whether we can discover, uh, you know, the presence of dark matter with gravitational waves around compact objects, and then if by analyzing the particular the, the waveform, we can discriminate one particular candidate from another one, whether it is uh, you know weakly interacting massive particles, or axions, or stellar neutrinos, and so on. It's quite embarrassing, I would say, that uh, you know we have a standard cosmology, we we have a, a, a model for cosmology for the structure and evolution of the universe. It works perfectly, uh, but yet, you know, in order for, for this model to explain the universe, we have to postulate uh -huh. these unseen forms of, uh, of matter and, and energy. And, and that's embarrassing, I would say, for, uh, for cosmology. Uh, and, uh, and I think it would be really, really great if, uh, uh, you know, we, at least one of the solutions we've, uh, we've proposed to explain dark matter turned out to be true. Uh, because it would uh, help us understand uh, the universe uh, we live in and also our role, the role that you know, we as human being, beings play in it. Have any favourites among all these possible solutions to the question? I'm, I'm quite open-minded. Uh, you know, if, if, I, if, I uh, if I could choose, uh, I would uh, probably uh, pick uh, primordial black holes uh, because that would uh, I mean, not only explain the dark matter problem, but also open a new window on the early universe. Uh, and that would be really exciting that we have ways of it, you know, uh, stunning them with gravitational waves, which is, you know, this new uh, window on the universe. So this would be very exciting. Unfortunately, I should say that at least for the objects, the, you know, for primordial black holes of mass, you know, one to 10 times the mass of the sun, it seems that we're getting st more and more stringent uh, constraints uh, on their existence. So that doesn't sound particularly promising uh, mm -hmm. as, uh, um, as a, they don't sound particularly promising as, uh, as candidates, uh, but we'll see, you know, I'm uh, very, I, I think everybody in the field is very open-minded uh, and we just hope to see within uh, our life to find a solution for this problem. Since NICEF, the, the institute where I come from, is uh, working on particle physics mm -hmm. mainly, uh, a dark matter particle would be exciting just as well. Of course, it would be absolutely, you know, incredibly exciting, and you know that's how that's you know the uh, main hypothesis we've focused on for the past for, for the past uh, three or four decades because it's really so exciting. You know, it would be um, a a, um, a way of understanding how we have to extend particle physics, elementary particle physics. And uh, uh, you know we will be able to study these new particles uh, at accelerators, to study their properties, and to discover an probably an entire new sector uh, of uh, of new physics. So it will be you know an incredible discovery that will keep us busy for for decades to come. Well, happy dreams. Thank you. <laughs>